Well, good morning, Greenwich, and welcome to the Tuesday, October 26th edition of the Basement Academy. As we begin our uh, time together with our morning psalm, Psalm 146, I've read this a number of times. <clears throat> it's a psalm that bids us not put our trust in human leaders, uh, in mortal men, in princes is the language here. These would be the rulers of, of Israel. For us, it would be presidents and senators and congressmen and other worldly leaders, okay? Ultimately, our trust needs to be in God. And then there's a recitation of all the things that God does. And so uh, it's a great, great psalm. Very important to offer this in prayer for ourselves and for those who may be in a, a time of need. So let's pray. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortal men who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them, the Lord who remains faithful forever. He upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets prisoners free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the alien and sustains the fatherless and the widow, but he frustrates the ways of the wicked. The Lord reigns forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. Amen. Lord, hear our prayer for those in need. Lift us up when we are bowed down with life's troubles. Okay. Let's keep unlearning evangelism, that we might be faithful evangelists. So yesterday, introduced the idea of the village. You have a unique village where God has placed you as a strategic insider. There you are in the middle. I drew that little picture, right? Kind of little spider. So it looks like this. So there's you and you've got your work and family and old friends and hobbies and associations and neighborhood, etc. And so there is this unique village that God has placed you as a strategic insider. That's the key to understand that God has placed you there, that you have these relationships, not by accident, but on purpose. God has prepared good works in advance for you to do. And one of those good works is to care for, to pray for, to nurture, and to witness to your village, okay? So evangelism doesn't happen primarily amongst strangers. See, that's the thing we have to unlearn. We get afraid, like, oh, I don't know how to talk to strangers about God. How do I get into the conversation? Well, well remember, <laughs> these people are not strangers. Your village are all people known to you, okay? So, so call to mind your village now. Well, now from the standpoint of evangelism and witnessing, what do I say? What do I say to my village? Okay, there's words that we share in evangelism, right? Bearing witness. Now, remember, you know these people, okay? The question to kind of extend uh, yesterday's thought, the question is, are you willing to go deeper with your villagers? Are you willing to go deeper with family members? Probably the hardest villagers to bear witness to. They know you best, and so that's, that's tricky. But are you willing to go deeper with neighbors? Are you willing to go neat, deeper with coworkers and those that you associate with when you're out in recreation or other hobbies and other groups that you belong to? Are you willing to go deeper with old friends? Because what we tend to do is to fall into patterns. 
oh, I talk about this with that person. I talk about something else with this person over here. Sometimes it's the news. Sometimes it's the weather. Sometimes it's sports. Sometimes it's, you know, politics, whatever the, the latest. And so each of us does tend to have a bit of a pattern of communication with different people. And so the, the first thing is, are you willing to go deeper? So asked you yesterday to pray, to begin praying, not just as a one day exercise, but as something that you build into your life. Are you willing to pray for your village? Two things, openness that they would be open, but pray also that you would be open to go deeper. That praying for an opportunity that where they might ask a question or an opportunity presents itself to bear witness, are you willing to seize that opportunity and go deeper in conversation with them? And so that's a question that each of us alone can answer, but I put it to you. Are you willing to go deeper in conversation with your village? If not, why not? As a disciple of Jesus Christ, as an apprentice of, of the one who came to seek and save the lost, and some of those lost may be in your network, why would you not be willing to go deeper in conversation with them? Okay, so I just put that. I'm not trying to guilt, just trying to challenge. All right. Okay, here's a simple pattern, <clears throat> a way of thinking about how to go deeper. Okay. Name, news, needs, okay? Now, now, most of your villagers, you know their names well, but some villagers, you might not be 100% sure. You see that person at the water fountain, you know, kind of the water fountain at the office, and it, it might be Bob or it might be Bill, but you see them all the time, but you're kind of afraid, okay? So, so one of it, you, you got to find a way to get to that person's name, the name, uh, who was it? Uh, Dale Carnegie, I think it was. How to Win Friends and Influence People. A person's own name is the sweetest sound in any language. Okay, Hearing somebody call you by name that you didn't know knew your name, that, that, that all of a sudden, whoa, that, 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 that's the place where connection starts to happen. Knowing a person's name. Okay. So you might have to get creative. Say, oh, but I'm horrible at learning people's names. Yeah, it's because you, you choose that. I think a lot of us choose that as a way of not having to engage with people. It is easy to learn people's names. Now, what about the person that you've been around for a long time? Okay, well, you're going to have to get creative. You go to somebody else in the office. Hey, what's the name of that guy over there? It's that simple. <laughs> what is the name of that person over there? You ask somebody who you know will know, <clears throat> okay? And so, it, it, so name is the key. You start with the person's name. That's where you can be in a personal relationship. So next time you see that person, hey, Bill, <clears throat> how the kids? <laughs> so name, now news is, hey, what's going on in your life? <clears throat> Each of us is pretty willing to talk about things that we've got going on in our lives. Now, in the work environment, that's probably about the only place that you might be limited in being able to talk about some of these things. Certain workplaces do impose some limits. I get that. So you respect that, all right? Outside the office, you can maybe talk about things. But generally speaking, folks are willing to share some news of their life. Hey, Bill, <clears throat> man, I see you here all the time at the coffee pot. I, I confess, I've never even asked you simply, do you have a family? It's just, it, it's, it, it's, that's, it's having conversation, but you ask about the news of their life. I've never, I, I, forgive me for never, you know, taking it a step further. So forgive me, I, do you have family? Wife, kids, you know. And they say, oh yeah, got a wife, three kids. Oh, how old? How old are the kids? Oh, you know, we're 14, 17, and 21. Oh yeah, I've got, so you share some of your news, okay? 
And it's just that. You just start, so you move beyond the name to some news with that person. Now, if this is somebody in your web that you know, in your in your village that you know, hey, how's that situation going on with your uh, with your niece? You know, so you know something, you ask the follow up question. Okay, so so you're asking news of their lives. The, the the closest, the easiest news to ask about is one's family, one's set of relationships. So you're getting to know that person a little bit, expresses interest and support. And, and so if you already know about that person and their family, and if you're tracking, then track, right? And then just ask the follow-up question, okay? So news will give you clues for follow-up questions. They talk about your kids. You see an eye roll. Yeah, my 17-year-old, you know, they do that. Well, 17, you know, is probably in their junior or senior year of high school. And all of a sudden, you start to listen to their heart, okay? They, they do an eye roll or they sigh or something like that. Pick up on that clue. Okay, this is your willingness to go deeper. Pick up on that clue and say, yeah, what's up? I, I, something, something up with your 17-year-old? Yeah, you know, got in trouble last weekend, da-da-da, oh, you know. And then you just, you, you commiserate. You, you offer empathy and support. Not a lecture, not a scold. You know, well, if you went to church, those things wouldn't happen. Ah, that is never what you say. You express support. Man, that must be rough. You just say, man, that must be rough. <laughs> and then they're going to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. My wife and I are, are you know, whew, we're, we're not on the same page about how to handle this situation. Dang, you know. So you're just, you don't, you don't give advice. You're not being moralistic. You're not passing judgment. You're listening to their news for clues about their heart. That's something that they're in distress about, something that they're worried about, something that they're anxious about or angry or frustrated. If you're just willing to listen, you can pick up, okay, the clues, okay? Name, news, and then boom, needs. The need then, okay, so Oh, Bill's trying to figure out what to do with his 17-year-old and now he's in tension. So you've picked up in one conversation in a few minutes that he's worried about his 17-year-old. There's something going on there. You don't know all the details and he and his wife are not on the same page about it. Without knowing it, he's revealing there's a need, okay? Now, as you, over time, express support and conversation for that person, the needs will often bubble up into other questions about meaning and purpose, ultimately about God, okay? Life's ultimate uh, purposes. Human needs are often the place of encounter, okay? The Lord sets prisoners free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. And so Psalm 146 speaks to that condition, the human condition of need. We're prisoners. <laughs> We're blind. We're bowed down with the, the burdens of life. We're struggling with life. Um, there's pain. There's sorrow. There's disappointment. Everything that you deal with, guess what? So does your neighbor. So do all your villagers. The scripture says uh, in 1 Corinthians, there's no temptation that's overtaken you that is not common to men. The temptation to despair, the temptation to frustration and anger, the, the temptation to want to just quit it all and just quit on people and shake your fist at God. All those things that you deal with you know they're dealing with too. Every one of us is dealing with the same thing. The names, the situations, the circumstances differ, but the inner reality, the inner frustration, the inner uh, press upon the soul and the heart and the mind is, is the same for all of us. So you start there knowing that, knowing Genesis chapters 1, 2, and 3, knowing what we know about the human family, uh, both their blessedness and their burden, 
because you know that you know they're dealing with it too. So your conversation over time unearths those, reveals those things. And so the, the, the questions often will then come out of our needs. If, Hey, you want to go grab a bite to eat sometime? And you know, I, I've, I've, went through a real rough patch with, with one of my kids one time too, you know? So you offer yourself as a resource, you go grab a bite to eat sometime. And in the course of things, you, you know, you're talking about the news, the weather, the sports, you, you, you then, boom. Hey, so, you know, how, how's things with, how's things with your kid? You know, it might've been two weeks before you set the lunch up. How things going with, with, with uh, your son? Well, you know, we had the meeting with the principal and blah, blah, blah. You know, they start talking and say, well, you know, I, I, I mentioned that I had a, we had a rough patch with one of our kids one time and, um, mind if I share some of that? No, go ahead. You know? And so that willingness to then reveal yourself. Okay. Talk about your own struggle, your own burden, your own frustration, you know, and, and and I think there's wisdom to not saying, oh yeah, we talked to the principal and we figured everything out just like that. You know, I think you empathize and say it was hard. It's not talking so much about what happened with your kid. You talk about what happened in your heart. Yeah, we got the news. You know, our 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 kid was a, a freshman when when he got in trouble with the principal with the teacher, and you know, I was boy was I worried. Boy, was I frustrated. We didn't know what to do. That's what you talk about. You talk about your struggle because you're trying to make a, a personal connection uh, with, with Bill here. And so now you get to this situation. Okay, well, they start asking questions. But what if they ask a question that I can't answer? <laughs> well, let me just say, I hope they do. <laughs> Because that's the place where you're going to grow to. The fact that they would, if somebody would be willing to ask a deeper, meaningful kind of existential question, the, the number one question in, in so many words is always, why would God? Now you can fill in, fill in the blank after that. Why would God let this happen? Why would God allow this tragedy? Why would God place this burden on me. Why would, it's just, why would God? It doesn't matter what happens after that because <laughs> we're all asking the same question. This, the number one question people ask is, why would God permit so much suffering and evil? Okay. So why would God, this is the pay dirt question. You're listening for that, even if it doesn't come in exactly those terms, but hopefully it does because right at that point, now there's an opportunity to enter into the place of witness. Because underneath that question, why would God, <clears throat> is an assumption that God is powerful, that God is loving. And, and this notion is that a, a powerful and loving God ought not permit such things to happen. So there's a lot to affirm in that. So why would God... The, the, the first thing is that that is a great question. You know, you know, I, I believe as a Christian, so here's where your witness comes. As a Christian, I believe God is powerful. God is loving. God is in control of things. And I've wrestled with that question myself. Okay. So before you try to answer the question and freeze like a deer in the headlights, why would God permit this bad thing to happen to my family? That's what they're asking underneath the question, you as a, as an unlearned evangelist, you know, you're not afraid of those questions. You're, you're, you're trying to get to that question. You want your name, news, needs. You're trying to get to the place where they're going to ask you the question, why would God? Now, right about now, you're going, no, Don, you're wrong. I do not want people to ask me that question. <laughs> yes, you do. Here's the unlearning moment. You want people to ask, why would God? And you're going to affirm, as a Christian, you, you've wondered about that yourself. <laughs> and and you, you, you firmly believe that God is powerful and God is, is loving and that God somehow 
should be involved in those kind of situations. There's a long answer and a short answer. And you can say, you know, there, there's kind of a long answer, uh, a, a long way of responding to that that I've figured out over time that, that, that I've come to understand. And there's a short answer. I don't, you know, now may not be the time for the, for the long answer. The long answer is going to run you through Genesis chapter 3, that God created a good world, God created us in his image, but that humans made decisions against God and that has had consequences. So that's part of the longer answer, okay? The shorter answer is that God sent his son, seeing human misery and pain, God sent his son to enter into the suffering and pain, so much so that his son even suffered death to redeem the world, okay? So now you're talking the gospel, now you're talking about Jesus out of a situation where a guy's talking about his 17-year-old kid. Why would God allow that? That's the pay dirt question. And then it's, you know, if you've got time and you think there's kind of some interest, you're going to talk some Genesis 3, okay? The short answer is you're going to go right to God. God entered into the pain through his son, Jesus. Okay, we're going to talk more about this, okay? I'm going to try to unpack the, that, that answer for you. Maybe I'll do that tomorrow, okay? <clears throat> so the goal is you're trying to get to the pay dirt question, okay? That's, that's the goal. But how you're going to end the conversation because you got to wrap up lunch and you got to get back to work, okay? Hey, Bill, can I pray for you? Not, not right here. You know, if it seems appropriate, then you can pray right there. But can I, it, it, what, can I pray for you? Um, I, this is, it's, I just, just appreciate you sharing your heart with me. That is a struggle. You know, we, we've kind of, sounds like we've walked some similar roads. Um, I had some folks praying for me. I'd love to be one of those who just prays for you through this season. It, that's it. That's all you have to do. You don't have to say any more. You don't have to pray for them right there. That, that would be really that would probably feel kind of weird for everybody. If it works, absolutely go do it. But all you're saying is, with in, not in so many words, you're in my village and I'm going to pray for my village. <laughs> Can I pray for you? <clears throat> um, just that God would give you strength and, and, and hope through all this. And, you know, maybe I'll, I'll, let, let's, let's check in maybe in a few weeks, see how things are going. And don't hesitate to give me a call at any point. So now you're making yourself available uh, to that person. You see, this is God's work, good work that he has prepared for you. Ephesians 2.10. God has prepared you to pray for your village. The experiences that you've gone through, the, the valleys that you've walked through, the comfort that you have come to receive, the struggles that you have wrestled with are not only for yourself and your relationship with God, but for other people so that you now have a reservoir of experiences and struggles and, and wrestling with God that you can now share out of that in, in conversation with other people to help them in their time of need. The way <clears throat> it shows up in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, the comfort with which God comforts you, he will comfort other people with. God comforts you that you may be a comforter to others. We are what uh, I think Henry Nouwen writes about. We are wounded healers. We are all wounded. We're all broken. We're all struggled. <laughs> we all struggle. We're all faulted. We're all trying to figure life out. Out of those wounds, out of that brokenness and struggle, God intends to help others. We are wounded healers, okay? So let me close there <clears throat> for today, um, giving you a lot to think about. Um, this doesn't come quickly. It doesn't, it'll come more naturally for some than others. But this is how it works. This is how you begin to bear witness to your village. And it all goes back to, are you willing to go deeper? Are you willing for this to happen? I hope so. If not, we need to talk about why not. <laughs> And if so, then my job is to help equip you, the saints, for this good work, okay? And so we're going to talk tomorrow about how to unpack the why would God question and ways that the, the conversation can take shape, okay? Let's pray. Father, thank you <clears throat> for this opportunity this morning to think together about praying for those whom you've placed in our village 
And we do so for those whom we know are struggling and have pain, have brokenness. Lord, out of our own brokenness and pain and ways you've met us, have met us, Lord, help us to, to comfort and care and bear witness to them. Father, help us to go deeper. We want to go deeper. And where we resist that in, in some places, we pray that you would soften our hearts and open uh, us up uh, to the good things that you have prepared for us uh, in relationship with so many others. And so, Lord, we lift our prayers uh, in Jesus' name, even as he taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, may God lead you to pay dirt <laughs> and to opportunities uh, and openness to bear witness this day and forevermore. Amen.